Alberts, that's our word, brought to you by Adam Kokesh's Legal Defense Fund. We're rolling in the cash. And I'm here with David Lucart <laughs> <laughs> and Jeremy Hindlegger. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, Flat lever. Z- yeah. Um, Zombies, Government's new podcast and Seeds of Liberty. <laughs> Ab- Ab- yeah. Abstractions, respectively. Uh, <laughs> how are you doing, man? <laughs> oh, doing great. Yeah. Living the dream, buddy. So this is going to be a deviation from what we've been normally talking about lately, which is we say we're going to we plan everything out. Like, OK, we should talk about cryptocurrency while we're, we're you know, <laughs> and then we get into the thing and then we just end up talking about Satanism. Whole show. Uh, we're not going to be talking about Satanism. This episode. We're going to be talking about Kokesh. And it's going to be all Kokesh all the time. And this episode is going to be called I feel dirty already. The truth e. about Adam Kokesh. And unfortunately, it's not going to be a PowerPoint presentation with a blue background. Um, and my shiny bald head. <laughs> Not going to be doing that. Um, Dang it. But there's been some recent news about Adam Kokesh, and I have been blowing the whistle and going hard in the paint, uh, describing why this guy is a total fraudster. And, the, and, the, and we're going to talk about how the apple doesn't fall far from the tree and his history of scamming in the process. Uh, but what do you guys know about Kokesh and his uh, scams and all that stuff? And what do you guys think about him? I'll let you guys have the floor. Well, funnily enough, I've been listening to a podcast that was talking about uh, Jim Jones of the uh, Jonestown Massacre, and I was like, finding a lot of parallels here uh, between him and and, uh, Adam in terms of kind of how they, you know, the Jim Jim Jones was like a socialist uh, death cult. Well, I think Adam can't, Adam's kind of running a libertarian death cult, from what I can tell. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> so, whoa. Whoa. I mean, getting, you, getting, you know. We're, we're getting deep. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. Yeah, that's really. I, I, I mean, you know, uh, that's some invective, but it's, it's you know, it's kind of the same kind of skeevy feel to it. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about yeah. all that, but it seems <laughs> pretty bad because I have talked to people like Jack Fest who have just got off the, his plantation, <laughs> literally his plantation, and they had some really kind of nightmare stories coming out of that thing. And I was like, whoa. Wait a minute. What, wasn't he there too? <laughs> who? Wasn't, wasn't Adam at Jack Fest? Yeah, he showed up at Jack Fest, but he showed up like like towards the end Later. of it. Later. Yeah, towards oh, okay. the end of it. So, there so you was got the horror days. stories first. Yeah. So Jack Fest is a is a, an event that takes out in Baca Woods, which is out in the middle of fucking nowhere, Arizona. But I mean, it's really beautiful, really fucking beautiful. And it's not a desert. It's like a, a forest, like a pine forest. And it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Love it. Uh, didn't go last year. Want to go again. Um, and it's a week. But the first like four days or so, it's like dead. There's like a few people there. And you get to meet like some of the people who are really hardcore Um, But that's it. You don't really the bigger names start coming a little bit later. Um, So I I was really kind of talking to a lot of people who were there or just came came from Adams. um, What is it? Homestead? Is that what he calls it? Homestead? And they were I guess some horror stories how they were not being paid at all. And they were constantly. No. Yeah, they were not being paid. They were um, they were given like really inadequate like living conditions and. Um, they were constantly being pressured to to work harder, even though they were busting their ass for him, and there was just no thanks whatsoever. It was really kind of like um, he was really kind of gaslighting him into fucking working harder. And yeah, so I can I can get the kind of parallels between Jonestown because Jonestown they had the same kind of thing where he was kind of manipulating mm-hmm. them to 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 work harder, even though they were busting their ass for him. Um, so yeah, I get that, but I don't I don't know about I don't think, I don't <laughs> think he's going to be having them drink Kool Aid. At least maybe not no. until now, and then we expose his fraud, and he's going to be it, poor now. And apparently, it was actually flavor aid. I guess I couldn't spring. Yeah, yeah. for uh, for actual Kool Aid. <laughs> Grape flavor aid that Great. tasted like almonds because that's what st- was it strychnine tastes like. Yeah, strychnine. Yeah. Oh, uh, but if it's if it's if, if if Adam does it, he'll have everybody drinking ayahuasca and stuff. And, you know. <laughs> Arsenic ayahuasca. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, pray it doesn't come to that, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. I don't. I, I don't I, think it will, but it's the same kind of. Did you guys? No, ever, I. Um, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, I, I yeah, I, I don't think it necessarily. Hope, well, hope don't doesn't get to that level, but I I can see those parallels too, because I mean, we were joking before we started recording, and I I use the word cult leader too, because I don't know, it's just the vibe I get from that from him, 
you know i i was talking about this the other night with a friend of mine and because like i've i've you know i've been in his pre i've been in adam's presence multiple times and the first time was years ago when i was still a huge fanboy of his because i was new to anarchism and just like the very first time i met him i just got these weird vibes from him like being in his presence and where it was just like first he like i was all excited to meet him because i was just you know this st stupid excited newbie and i was like oh adam kukesh is here and he kind of just like brushed me off and then later when he kind of warmed up to everything i just kind of watched the way he like surveilled the room and like you know it was just always on and just you know kind of i don't know I, I used the word swarmy the other day and a bunch of people were like what the heck does that even mean and i'm like i don't know it just this is what the word that i think of when i think of him yeah that's about right uh and then the next time I the next time was at another event in New York City and I went to go hang out with him at an after party and a bunch of other people. And again, he was just he was it was that, you know, that the person he is in his videos and stuff when he's on and being at like being that Adam and he just seemed to be like he's just so fake. And I just yeah. I ended up walking out of there that night and I'm like, after that I I was done with him. I'm like, I can't even you know, just and then and then I and it was after that that I started hearing all the stories of all the things he had done to people. Like I didn't even know all that. It yeah. was just that, like literally being around him. I was like, yeah, I don't, I'm, you're, I'm not a fan of yours anymore, man. Yeah, I, 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 I had been a libertarian since ooh, 2005. That's when I started getting into like Penn and Teller's bullshit, and that started kind of getting me out of the whole being a Democrat thing, and. I was like, this is really interesting, libertarianism, and then I found Michael Badnark, and Michael Badnark was the guy that kind of really was my rock star for a while, and then I kind of had some disillusions with him as well, because he's a nut job. A lot, of the, <laughs> a lot of the stuff that he was saying in his constitution class turned out to be complete trash, uh, factually inaccurate garbage, um, but you know, like I still was like friendly with him until he disappeared from Facebook, and I haven't talked to him since. Um, anyways... So I had never heard of Kokesh. Um, you know, like I've I've been reading a lot of like libertarian stuff, but it was more like the the academic stuff that I was more interested in than but I was did, did listen to Free Talk Live. Um that, but that was pretty much it. Like for the most part, I was more kind of like reading the books, Mises, Rothbard, all that stuff. And then um then I remember like the whole years when I was really kind of digging in his zeitgeist, there was a show that came on this news show that a uh, news uh, network that I've never never heard of before called RT or at the time was called Russia Today um, and they were like oh this is libertarian show on this news network this cable news network and I was like I've never heard of this cable news network and it was for good reason um, and it was <laughs> it was called Adam versus the man and I was like oh yep. okay so I'll, I'll check this show out and I was like okay it seems okay it's 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 a little kind of one on one ish, but whatever. It's it's mildly entertaining. There's some cringe at wor worthy parts, especially where he talks for anonymous. That was always made me cringe, but for the most part, it was okay. <laughs> there was a lot of kind of like stuff about truthers and stuff, and I was like, okay, whatever. This guy seems okay. And then when he got fired from that, he uh, he did his, he had his own. That's when I sort of like, oh, he had his own podcast and all this other stuff. And I watch remember watching a few of his episodes, and I'm like. Something's not right with this guy. Like, I don't know what it is, but I'm just not interested anymore. And it, <laughs> it was like, I smelled fish, but I didn't know where the smell was coming from. And then years later, I found out this guy was a terrible shit bag and whatever. And then I met him at Jack Fest after talking with some of his employees or whatever. And he told me like, yeah, I'm kind of done with the whole meat act hit activism stuff. And like, yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. And. He's like, yeah, after being arrested and all that stuff, I just kind of was like, I'm just tired of doing this. I'm going to be working more towards just getting people on board. And I'm like, okay, that seems legit. I'll have you on my on my program. That's you know, uh, He was actually a, a, a guest, one of the few guests we've had on the Lords. He was a guest uh, when we did the Jack Fest episode. And at the very end, I showed him a flag, the flag that I had made for him the, the, uh, back when I used to make a lot of ANCAP flags. Or the, the anarcho Gadsden flags, but he says like don't. Pay, and I showed him the one that says don't pay your interns, and he laughs. And I was I was kind of weirded out. Like why would you laugh at that? Because that's not funny that you ripped people off. Yeah right. Yeah, and I was like okay whatever. Here's your here's your bip strong. Get out of here. <laughs> I just didn't think about it until like more stuff came out about his relationship with Macy, who I had talked to. They had just broken up at that time. And she was kind of hinting at certain things that he did, but never really kind of came out with it. And the whole exposition about him and his girlfriend just was damning. And then all the stuff about the fraud started coming uh -huh. out. And I was like, man, this guy keeps getting worse every time I look into him. So 
uh, not a fan. <laughs> not a fan. Yeah. But I never really looked up to the guy. I never thought of him as a rock star. I was just like, okay, who is this guy? You know? Yeah. Anything yeah. else? Anything else anyone wants to add before we get into it? Because we're going to go hard in the paint. We're actually going to we're actually going to give evidence for the things we're saying. You need to hear us out. This is just kind of a oh, weeding man. out all the all the junkies, all the <laughs> cocaine junkies <laughs> the way who who we're not going to convince anyway. These people are religious nut jobs. Um, but there oh, are God, pe- yeah. but there are people who are going to be like, no, let, let's hear the criticism, and this is going to be for you. So we weeded out those people. We're here for the rational people and. So yeah, is that anything else you guys want to add before right. we get into it? No, no, nah, man, this is a good summation. Yeah, yeah. So the recent news uh, that we that we're getting is that Kokesh filed from his camp is that Kokesh filed for paperwork to run for president, uh, and then forty minutes, anywhere from ten to one hour later, uh, he got arrested in in Texas after being pulled over twice. Uh, he had a, uh, an interaction with the police, which was live streamed on his live stream. I don't know what yap he's using um, where the his whole interaction with the police. And then they they brought out a, a drug sniffing dog. The dog alerted on his vehicle and he was arrested and they got him for possession of um, it was like over an ounce, but under five ounces of marijuana and two other controlled um, substances, along with tampering with evidence. So he's he's in, he's in trouble. <laughs> he's in kind of big trouble. They won't say what the two uh, things are. Kokesh is denying that he had any contraband on him whatsoever, and he just says that this is just them, the government coming after him because they see him as a threat. Now I, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna say what my initial reactions were to this, but <laughs> David, what did you think when you first heard this? Um, well, my bullshit meter is already full, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, no, I, when I I watched the video and I'm like, okay, why would they pull him over twice in a period of minutes if um, they were really, like, you, you know, kind of like what you mentioned earlier, if they were actually just trying to arrest him, why wouldn't they just do it on the first uh, uh, stop, you know? Yeah. So to me, it kind of tipped me off like, okay, he's out trying to get arrested. Yeah. It's, it's, like a, it's a publicity stunt to... Uh, draw attention to the fact that he just, you know, uh, did his registration to run for the president or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that, that was the first warning bell. And then obviously way too friendly with the cops. I mean, uh, Adam Kokesh is famous for getting, you know, arrested for civil disobedience and all that. So he knows how to act around cops. And it seems like he was literally doing everything the opposite of what he would normally do in an encounter like that, mm-hmm. which was another red flag. And, uh, when I saw him walk over to the RV and start messing around with the uh, storage area that was not secured or whatever, I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> I, I, I've never been in a situation like that. I mean, I've been, you know, pulled over and all that. But I was like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? You know, you don't do that. They're going to fucking – you're going to get busted for that. So it just – all these red flags were popping up just from initial – just from the initial watching of it. And then as I watched it more and, and kind of – heard more of the, the details behind it. It just really started to stink yeah. to me. And I'm looking around so, like uh, maps of Decatur, Texas, where he was arrested. And it's a very rural town. Now, I don't know if you, you guys have ever done like long trips across country in cars. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Good there's times. A, <laughs> there's a lot of little towns in these, in these states like Texas, and New Mexico, and, you know, you know, usually colored states, like really deeply colored states, red and blue states that have there have these little towns that have, you know, not really big. Well, yes, I guess the interstates, too, um, but have like these little highways that you need to take to get to other cities that go through these little towns. And the town is pretty much predicated like most of their funds come from pulling people over for speeding. And what you speed do traps. Yeah, right. they're, they're speed trap towns. And you'll mm-hmm. drive through like these areas where it's 65, and if you drive 66, they will pop you right away. Um, and then they'll mm-hmm. they'll also do these tricks where like they'll say like you're coming into town, drop it down to 55, 45, 35, 25, 15, <laughs> and if you go one mile over the speed limit, they will bust you. Um, so it's not out of the question that they would pull someone over going not was it nine miles an hour over the speed limit. That's that's true. Very very common. 
uh, which is what they said. That he was going 74 and a 65. 65. Yeah. So if the government was really kind of going after Kokesh, like if they really wanted, wanted, like, you know, oh, he just filed for paperwork to, you know, go get him, boys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wee! <laughs> you know, Ralph Wiggum, I guess. I, someone <laughs> said that joke. I forget who. I'm sorry. I would credit you if you did, if I remembered. Um, <laughs> if, if that was the case, they would have just busted him immediately from that first stop. They wouldn't let him go. And then busted him again. It sounds like, yep. and this is this is speculation because, you know, I don't know. I wasn't there. I, I, you know, the government does lie. Who knows? Um, but Absolutely. he was speeding. He didn't get what he wanted, so he started speeding again through another tr- uh, speed trap town, and then got got what he wanted. That's what it seems like. Because mm-hmm. the idea, I mean, the, the the argument that he got pulled over because he 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 was a threat to the state. If that was the case, they would have just handled him the first time they arrested him, not let him go <laughs> and yeah. try again. That does not hold water. Yeah, that, that doesn't make sense at all. Yeah. yeah, and I think like a normal response, at least when I have gotten stopped for speeding, uh, after I'm done with the you know stop and and the revenue generation and all that, is to fucking slow down. You know, yeah. at least for a little. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm like, well, fuck, I just you know just got pinched. I don't need to you know push it again I, mean, yeah. you know, I might drive you know what i'm saying like so do, get pulled over for it and then immediately to do it again and this guy travels all the time right i yeah. mean that's what he does yeah he so he's not a stranger to what you're talking about like just like you mentioned the small towns with the um the good old boy network where you know they got to get their money you know so for him to do that you know either yeah you can say he wasn't paying attention but i mean after you get stopped by the cops never a pleasant experience uh, I would think I'd be a little on my guard and probably drive a little more carefully, but you know, yeah. I'd like to think I'm a rational human being. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's a, just the clue to all this. He's just stupid. <laughs> He's not really scamming anybody. He's just an idiot. Um, that, that's the entire possibility. It's entirely. But what about you, Jeremy? What did you heart. think when you heard? Yeah, my, well, my my initial reaction was somewhat similar because I didn't even look at this look at the story right away. I didn't get around to doing that for a, for a while. I just assumed that he was up to something because like you said he does have a history of this of doing you know i mean he is the guy who went to what was it monument not, i want to say monument park but that's in yankee stadium not in washington dc <laughs> that's uh, wherever that park whatever whatever park he went to in dc like he did that like he, he went out of his way to get arrested yeah. and every every other so-called activism thing he's pretty much ever done was always with the intent of trying to get himself arrested for Mm -hmm. ratings purposes you know whether it was youtube views or whatever so no bad publicity right yeah yeah of course so yeah there is no bad that's what you want is bad publicity (laughs) traditionally viewed as bad publicity it's great publicity for libertarians Mm -hmm. we love that no absolutely yeah absolutely yeah yeah so yeah i i figured he was up to something and then what once i once i watched everything and uh and, and then was finally able to listen to your piece on it i was like oh yeah this is all it, there's no way yeah. <laughs> this is not like that even even the fact that that he could I, the fact that he's throwing it out there that you know it's because i was i was filing to run for president and the people are actually buying this is, is probably the saddest part to me because i'm like who who honestly believes that <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's he's a lot barely of some, he's barely somebody he's barely somebody in our world he's definitely not anybody in their world yeah i mean kokesh <laughs> did get a little bit of press but i don't think most people remember it when he did that thing at, at the park he was sparking hey 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 pass pass it to me <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> i heard a lighter I, uh, I don't want you getting all paranoid or yeah, yeah. <laughs> jim's over there oh, vaping God. tide pods so. maybe maybe they <laughs> You're like maybe they are after me. <laughs> They're after me for vaping Tide Pods. <laughs> they know. <laughs> yeah, Kokesh is the Tide Pod of Liberty. Anyways, uh, so <laughs> that's going in the Bam. title. <laughs> yeah, that that has to be it. Yeah. So yeah, that was kind of like that doesn't make sense. Uh, it's also quick aside. Steve Miller Mill actually dig, did dig up his paperwork that he filed for running for president, and it turned out it was right. It was about an hour afterwards. If you also add one month and nineteen days, <laughs> what? 
Yeah. So Kokesh filed his paperwork for running for president December 1st of 2017. So was it, so what was what, what was he filing the other day? I don't know. Maybe he maybe he got the five grand <laughs> in donations and he needed to file the paperwork for that. I thought it was but, I thought it was six. <laughs> yeah, he, he he filed to run for president last year in December. Who's counting? Yeah. Yeah, it's, well, all the, look, it, look, we're just being spurg lords, okay? Who cares if it was an hour yeah. or a month and a half, okay? It's, it's, it, all that matters was that like he was talking about time passed. Yeah, come on. He was exactly. saying that it, he didn't do it yet. That was the whole point, is that he just did it. You know, a month hour, ago. Uh, hour and a half, potato, pothead, whatever. Yeah. You know, come on, they're all the same. Could have been a time-traveling RV, man. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> It was only an, it was it was, an, it was only an hour in uh, you know Kokesh time. Yeah, you know? <laughs> he was really in, high. In the real world, you know, we've all aged a month and a half. So. Yeah, or so, I mean, it is possible it could take that. Did it take? Did it get approved? He said he filed it, not that it got approved, right? Because I could see the government yeah, the, the claim taking was, a month and a half to approve it or yeah, accept no, it yeah, or whatever. But no, no, that, it, I don't yeah, think the, that's what he said. It was that yeah, it was filed. I do believe. Yeah, I do believe the claim was that it was filed. That was what that was the wording. Yeah, right. But let's say that it was passed, right? Like they they saw him as a threat, and it took them a month and a half to approve him. Why would why just not approve him? That would have been a whole lot easier. It's like just just say no. He can't run. He's so much of a threat. Just say no. He can't run. There you go. <laughs> Problem solved. We don't have to arrest this guy or anything. Like, <laughs> you can just say no. Problem solved. No. Nope. No, no, Sorry. That, that wouldn't that wouldn't hold water either. If that was his, case. <laughs> that was his case. <laughs> All right. So the the next thing that came up was the uh, um, the videotape, the 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 live stream. Did you you guys watch this? Right. Mm-hmm. I watched most of it. Yeah, most of it. Yeah, yeah. It's really hard to watch because you're just like, oh, shut up, Adam. Just shut up. And I don't mean like shut up. I I hate I hate you and wish you you know <laughs> wish you were Re- dead. Or I wish you. <laughs> Oh, no, just stop them. talking to them. Yeah, it was just like, don't, why yeah. are you talking to the cops? Like, don't just, give them anything. Yeah. He, well, see, like, that's what I would, like, that, what you saw there was what I was referring to earlier, that Adam, like, he was on, and, like, that to me is just a, a tip-off that he's up to something, because that's just, that's the persona he has created when, uh, you know, when he when he's out there interacting with the public as it were you know you can watch it in any of his videos you, you know no matter the subject no matter who he's talking to eventually you just if you pay enough attention to him that's just kind of what he does and it's it's all a shtick so he knew what he was doing I, I don't i don't have a doubt about that that he he totally knew what he was doing and you know especially that gigantic grin <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, when they told him it was time to go bye bye, and he he was like, "Okay, sure, I'll turn my camera off." You know, <laughs> right? When like, he knows, who does he that? when he knows He's... he doesn't have to. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That's in, that, that that again. That makes no sense. And and again, the fact that he was, you know, already doing stuff like messing with the storage um, compartment, like you know, and doing things that probably that the cop could have at any time been like, "Yo, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Put your hands up!" You know, like uh, yeah. Uh, when, when he when he did that, I was expecting them to. At least you know, say something like, "Hey, get back!" You know, exactly. Uh, so, like the fact that he already took that step, why would he not continue filming? Yeah, that makes no sense whatsoever. I, like, especially him of all people, that's what he does. He films that he has things filmed for him. That is what he is all about. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, and there was also little things that he was doing t- that seemed like he was trying to egg the cops on. Um, like there was a, a part where the dog. And uh, I, I didn't really notice this at first. Like, I, it was kind of weird at first, but then it really kind of clicked for me. That's what he was doing when Ben Stone on Twitter posted this. And he was like, this doesn't make sense. Why would you do this? Is that his dog, Baloo, um, you, know, you know, was at the thing. And he was like, oh, hey, nice dog. Is it going to, does it bite? And he's like, no, nah, he's a good dog. You know, he won't bite you unless, you know, you're the kind of person that would shoot a dog. Yeah. There's little things like that where you're just like, you're just trying to piss this cop off. Like You're trying to, to get him angry. You're trying to give him reasons to, you know, be suspicious. Escalate it. Yeah, or escalate the situation. Um, another thing was, like, he was saying, like, oh, yeah, I'm a, you know, I do civil disobedience and, uh, you know, I'm an activist and, you know, like, 
I'm not a big fan of the of what the police do, and I respect what you do, or whatever. And it was he grabbed him a copy of his book and was giving. It's like you're you're laying out your dossier to the cop. Like you, all you had to do was just tell him like, oh yeah, I'm speeding. I'll take the ticket. I'll go away. by. Like that's all you had to do, and just not pay the ticket. And then he could do some civil disobedience with that. That's fine. But he was really giving them all of the information that they needed to be like, okay, this guy has something or is doing something or is, you know, like he, he, he's advers- he's an adversary of us. We should, you know, start sniffing things out, which is what he wanted. The, all of that stuff was just giving them information to, to, and giving them the, the reasons to be suspicious and all this stuff, which by the way, in all of his stuff that he's done in the past, like he tells you, don't talk to the cops, don't give them information, don't answer certain questions, don't refuse them to search and all this other stuff. But he was just gleefully like, oh yeah, go ahead. How you doing? Here's all my information and top blah, blah, blah. Oh, you didn't, uh, let me get, let me tell you some other things you probably don't know about me that might be interesting to you. It's like, why are you doing this? You know better. You talk about these things regularly. Well, he's he's ascended past that now. Yeah, <laughs> you know? now, that's that's for just their normal little libertarians and and run of the mill, you know, activists. Yeah. What was the other thing he said? <laughs> um, it's like when when they when they came around, the dog was really sniffing in one little compartment. I guess what do they call? I don't know what they're called. They're like a part under the RV where you can open it up. It's like towards the bottom of the vehicle, and it's like a little storage cubby where you can put all your stuff in. I forget what they call it. I, uh, I pot container. <laughs> 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 one Cannabis of them, cubbies. Yeah, one of them was open. Wink. And yeah, it was like cracked open and the dog was kind of sniffing it out really heavily. And he was like, Oh, he's like, I have one of those, those bins open. And he turns over to the cop and he's like, Yeah, like you could have pulled me over for that. And he was like, You were going seventy four in a sixty five. It was a justified stop. Like it was he was basically like Telling him how to do his job, just little things like that. That was you could tell, like he's just saying it to egg, egg the cop on. The just, cop, cop acknowledged that, like you're just saying shit to get me to throw, put you in cuffs. And then when he was like, okay, the dog alerted because they brought out a drug dog, sniffed the sniffed the truck. The dog alerted. Now, I'm, I'm telling you that this, like, cops do have a way to get dogs to trigger. They do absolutely. Yeah, yeah I've I've talked about that at length before. As as a canine behavioralist, I know full well that what is possible, not only what is possible and what what I can do with a dog, but I have I have former clients who were cops who do let me in on what exactly went they went oh, through yeah. with their training and stuff like that, and what you know, and then I work with them after the fact, so I, I know full well what they what, what what that they do that all the time. But yeah, like you said, it's they do do it. But in this case, I don't know. <laughs> they didn't really have to. Yeah, he. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's let's he, be honest. He, yeah. he 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 might as well have been standing right in front of it with like those like with those flags like waving an airplane in, going here you go, right here. <laughs> Sa- orange safety vest. Yeah. Exactly, officer, officer. Yeah, the pot is right here. They, they, Which you know. Whatever you, you should, do, don't look behind me. No, Which is, don't do it. Which is bullshit anyway. I mean, let's, you know, I mean, that's not a reason to arrest or stop anybody. Let, you yeah. know, I'm not, so we're not sticking up for the cops pulling this guy over. No, or, of course. For that reason, you know what I mean? Yeah. But be, be smart, you know, be smart about yeah, it. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to defend like bikers beating the shit out of some guy for just saying something, but it's probably not a good idea to call a biker a faggot in a, in a biker <laughs> bar. It's probably not a good yeah. idea. <laughs> like it, it, yeah. you have to, you have to say like, yeah, I understand what they did to you is unjust. I get it. But why the fuck are you doing that? <laughs> like what the fuck is wrong with you on top of that? There's You didn't have to you didn't have to kick his motorcycle over. Yeah, you, you didn't know? have to <laughs> You didn't have to say his <laughs> didn't have to say like you should paint your bike pink faggot <laughs> like there's certain things that you just don't say to a biker and there's certain things you don't say to a cop and he did those <laughs> he did exactly that and i i and get, got the expected result it's hard to feel sympathy uh, it's really hard to feel sympathy for someone who's eagerly throwing himself into police cuffs um so yeah the uh so the next thing that he did is after he noticed that it was thing and he pointed out to the cop the thing was open he goes over to the storage bin and starts messing with the storage bin and trying to close it and he's having some str- he struggles with it for a bit and then finally gets it closed and i believe that might be where the charges is coming with tampering with evidence Tamp- yeah i think yeah. that's where it's coming yeah. from i don't know 
when they have the drug dog out, yeah, you don't want to like walk back. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it looks really bad if you walk over and even if they can't, you know, even if they drop that charge later, that's something that you've just given them something you can be charged with. You've yeah. given them, like you said, another reason, more probable cause, wh- whatever. And he knows this. Right. <laughs> he, he's not. <laughs> Well, he is an idiot, but he, he he he's not an idiot about this. <laughs> like he knows that's what's going to happen. Like this is not this is not unfamiliar ter- terrain for him at all. Like this guy makes a mm-hmm. living doing civil disobedience and dealing with police encounters and cops and all the stuff. He knows this stuff. It's he's not he's not stupid in that respect. He's stupid in other respects, but um. So yeah, now the, so. The Adam Camp is saying that Adam never drives around with contraband. He he would he would never do that. Like, why would you think that Adam would drive around with co- uh, contraband? Now, <laughs> I've hung out with Kokash. You guys have. I know Jeremy. Have you hung out with him, David? No, I, I've never met him. Even okay. though we kind of reside in the same uh, tax farm, you okay. know. But, um, uh, <laughs> two two out of yeah, two out but, of three but, but tax I've, farms. I've, I, I yeah I, whatever it is I know he's got a place around here in AZ but uh no I, I've read what he's into you know yeah. I know he's into the pots and that's all well and good more power to yeah yeah more power to you on both accounts man yeah you and know. and for the record we're not saying that doing drugs is bad we're not saying that I partake right. I know Jeremy partakes I don't know about you David <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> uh, I just I operate heavy machinery. Well, I got kids. I just I just stick to the uh, to the hops to okay, the beers. Okay. beers. <laughs> you, you like those you kind know? of flowers? Yeah. Well, yes. They're... <laughs> That's my green. Right there. <laughs> the the claim the claim is that he does that he doesn't drive around with any of it because he can't possibly hide the fact that he does partake yeah, because he right. you know talks about it openly in all of his show you know it's all of his stuff everywhere, but you know. Sure, you want to say that, but like I have, you know, I have multiple friends who've hung out with him in the in the damn RV and smoked with him. <laughs> um, so he clearly had it with him because yeah. he was driving across the country. So like, you know, I I don't that that's that's another thing. I just don't understand that. It makes absolutely no sense. You're somebody who. You know, if you're going to make the claim that this is happening because you've been targeted because you know you. Uh, you're, you're filing to run for president. Well, then you should be more than smart yeah. enough to realize that you're, you have a target on your back. So you definitely mm-hmm. shouldn't. Cause you know, somebody brought that up to me. They're like, well, you talk about it in, in your videos. I'm like, sure. I talk about it. I talk about the things I do on national nationally syndicated radio. <laughs> I also don't put it in my goddamn car when I go anywhere. Yeah, I'm not I was that on natu- stupid. I was on nationally syndicated <laughs> talk radio frying balls on acid. All right. Uh, so this yeah, is, th- I'm not, I'm not saying like, Oh, tr- people who do drugs are terrible. This is not, not what I'm saying, <laughs> not at all. Quite the contrary. Jim- I I love me some mushrooms, man. I love me some mushrooms. I'm not into weed. Me too. Yeah, I'm not into weed. Weed makes me too paranoid now. I used to. I tried to get back into it recently, and I just was just like, I give up. I'm just done. I, I'll I'll just do my kratom. That's 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 my background shit. <laughs> that's my background <laughs> background shit drug. Um, but yeah, I I Low like key. Uh, yeah, I love me some mushrooms, but. Um, but back when Kokesh was arrested in that in Liberty Park, what was what did you call it? Monument Park, whatever. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 Monument but, Valley, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in, in Zion Valley, uh, no, right. Col- Colab, Colab Canyon, whatever. No. <laughs> Always got to have something Kokesh about Kokesh Canyon. <laughs> someday, okay, someday, course. someday. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yeah, he he was uh, he he. They said they found mushrooms on him, or at at his uh, at his place because they they raided his house. They said they found mushrooms, and he was like, "I wouldn't have mushrooms. Why would I have mushrooms?" And then you go and look on his YouTube channel, and all the videos of him, all of his video, because he used to do videos where he did DMT. Which is fine. Like you yep. want to do DMT, awesome. I want to try it too. But <laughs> like <laughs> it's it's wonderful. I don't know if I want to do a video on it. Yeah, but. <laughs> yeah. I, I, but there's there was multiple videos of him doing DMT, and then after he comes out of it, he would talk about what his experiences was, which is great. Like I love those videos. I love the Salvia ones are even better. Um, but it, when you're when you're doing all that stuff, and then you're saying like, oh, I don't I don't have mushrooms. Why would you think I have mushrooms? I wouldn't do mushrooms. Then delete those videos from your YouTube channel. You're like. Don't fucking shit in my mouth and call it a Sunday. You got you had mushrooms, okay? <laughs> like it's possible yeah. they did plant it, whatever. 
but don't don't sit there like this is wildly out of the question that you would have mushrooms. Come on, don't don't be, lie to me. Beyond the pale, yeah. Dude. It's in, <laughs> come on, man. Yeah, don't 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 tell me. <laughs> don't fucking lie to me. That's all I'm asking you. It's just simple. Don't lie to me. Um. So what else? What else did we uh we talk about? Some of the things he was saying to the cops. We just everything was wrong about this. The the last part of the video was where the police said, okay. The dog has alerted and you're you're being arrested um, or we're going to search the vehicle. Please turn the camera off. Now, does he have a legal right to film the police searching his vehicle? Yes, yeah, absolutely. As far as, I, 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 as, far as I, I, the way I understand it. Yeah, I believe it. I believe the uh, the, the high and mighty uh, fairies in the uh, black robes of, uh, <laughs> the ring ra- yeah. have, have the decreed ring multiple times that uh, yeah. you have a legal right to put to, you know the, yeah. they, they, they've... yay please have the right to ask you to stop filming and which is what they did they said okay we'd like to stop filming now and he could have said no or at least even try even if it wasn't legal he could have tried to be like no like i'm gonna no i'm gonna film you this is the, you know this is bullshit it's, like if he, if he was yeah, right if it was me i'd be like no i like if i was driving around which i normally don't have contraband like i and i'm genuine like i don't drive around with that shit in my car like in my exactly. house that's no, no comment but <laughs> but if you like you <laughs> drive driving around like you'll guarantee you'll probably never ever 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 catch me with any of that stuff ever um but you know, if like they said that the dog alerted on my car, I'd be like suspicious. Like, no, because I I don't have anything on me. I'd never carry that stuff on me. Why would that scent be in my car? That doesn't make any sense. No, I'm gonna film you guys f- searching my car. But he immediately right. was like, "Okay, see you guys later. Bye. Say bye to the camera cop. I'm gonna turn it off now. Bye. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Unless maybe they actually had the evidence or they're digging around like, oh, look, we found some pot under your little thing that you were trying to close. That's the only thing that I can imagine why he would turn it off. He was so willing that he just didn't want the evidence to, for people to see them actually pull something out of his car. And be like, oh, shit, that's a lot of weed, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. yeah. That's another. But, you know, there'd probably be a way to still keep filming them without, you know. Up to a certain point, yeah. you know what I mean. Like, why? Do, at least give it like a little, little token resistance, right? Not just kind of yeah, roll just roll, roll right over and be like, all right, well, you know, like you're going on a field trip or you know to <laughs> gra- to, to grab a burger or something. Bye, guys. You know, I'll write you from camp or yeah, something. You know we're what going I mean? Going to like, Whataburger. Might as well. We're in <laughs> <yeah>. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Got a great barbecue place down the road. Yeah, you know, like, it's it's, you know. it's no In and Out. It's no Tommy's, but it's it's Whataburger whatever it's good yeah it's good. i'm gonna get some angry mail from clayton hi go ahead i don't know i don't know what any of those things are i mean i know what they are but i've never had any of them so. yeah or you, Come or on you out, can man. or you can be a complete burger cock and like uh, five guys but go ahead I don't five guys, sadly, sad, okay sadly five guys is one of the best things we have over on this end of the uh at least yeah. where i am so i'm okay with five guys i, I, I enjoy I five guys hate. i'm a big i'm a big fan uh, but why have five guys? Have, you have in and out and Tommy's. That's well, all yeah, I'm exactly, saying. Yeah. So I was saying we don't have those. Yeah. So like only only no, no one only a jerk no one knows what me. Tommy's is. Where's Tommy's? Nobody knows what Tommy's is. <laughs> Tommy's. I is, think it's only, Tommy's is our I think it's something only you know about. Yeah. Is it is it just in Vegas or what? It's I've never it's heard Southern California and so Cal- which basically okay. Vegas is. It's like Southern California without <laughs> like we're like we're gonna be a part of you, but we don't want any of your dumb laws. We want guns and gambling and hookers. Like, fuck you. <laughs> just send us your good burgers. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just give us, give, just give us your out. fast food stuff. Yeah, it's, it's all about chili. If you don't like chili, it's it's not your game. But oh, mm, all right, chili. Yeah. Anyways, go ahead. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> we're going. We're going on a field trip. That's where you left off. Before I interrupt, oh, you. you know, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's it's you know, you're you're going to the clink. You know what I mean? Not yeah. you're not going to you know. Down the road to a to a happy place. Yeah. So what you know? And he had a shit eating grin on his face the entire video. I don't know if he's just trying to play it cool or tough, you know. But yeah, he was. Yeah, it was I, like, I just he was happy. It's like when they told him, like, okay, yeah. we're gonna search your car. He turned the camera on himself, and he had a big old grin on his face. He was like, he was happy, like fuck yes. Yeah. I did almost, it. Um, They're gonna fuck him. So give me money. <laughs> almost yeah <laughs> that's what yeah yeah he was almost manic i mean that's what it was he's like oh dude i'm gonna 
I'm going to get so many donations, you know, for this. this is <laughs> yeah, and he did. <laughs> yeah. In a matter of one day, he pulled in like six grand uh, in donations for, for his bail fund. Now, so this is where we're going to start saying that this oh, is, please. This is I, don't, I don't even know. I don't even know why he needed that. He's been cleaning up on Steam it while being in jail because his girlfriend and his friends are posting on there and he, they're getting mm -hmm. like, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars a post yeah. for these for the, just to, just like these ridiculous updates that are like basically like, a, like a three updates about the dog too. like there's right. like been multiple updates about the dog and these <laughs> things are getting a couple hundred bucks a pop. So I don't do Steam it, but you're free to post anything on the little birds on Steam it for, for your money. Go right ahead there, Jeremy. It's all you. Oh, OK. <laughs> Because you're the only one that uses Steam it as a Lulbert, um, which yeah. I have problems with. But whatever, that's that's a different show. It's, yeah. uh, we already did that show, actually. Exactly. <laughs> we did that show. What am I talking about? Exactly. Uh, but they're they're bringing yeah. So they're bringing in they're bring, he's bringing in a heck of a lot of money in a hurry. Just you know. Yeah. So um. So okay. So after that happened, um, they were starting to post this link, and I don't know what the link was to exactly. I don't know what fundraising website they were using i could look it up while i talk a little bit and kind of filibuster and i'm using the wrong browser so yes. okay. Can't be, why don't you guys look it up it's on his facebook well, page uh, <laughs> I, don't I forgot I, I have to use chrome when i'm recording because uh, oh, because i'm doing i guess show i can look stuff. it up though. yeah uh, uh -huh. anyways i normally use firefox that's where i'm logged into facebook anyways um what was I going? Oh, yeah. So the donations. They kept posting this link on every single one of their updates, like to help bail money out of uh, Kokesh out of jail. And so everybody's been donating to this link. And last I heard, there was about $6,000, according to them. There's about $6,000 of money uh, per last update to the, the bail fund. And so people are donating money, thinking that, oh, we're going to pay for his bail for, for him to get out of jail so he can be a free man. Like, help get Kokesh out of jail donate to this link and he did this up or his girlfriend or one of his no i don't think it was his girlfriend i think it was one of the other team members went on this podcast called or tv youtube show called the honest media um, which is supposed to be a thing about trump's dishonest media thing and it's a it's a trump show like you see like little trump hats and a little trump bear and they're all they're trump fake news fake fake news yeah and they went on there and they said, uh, we haven't renounced this yet, but we're, I'll tell you this now because, you know, this is important, um, is that we're not going to give the money for Kokesh's bail to to the government. We're not going to negotiate with terrorists and all this stuff, which is fine. Like That's great. Like, you don't want to give the mo government money? Awesome. I'm, I'm all for it. Um, <laughs> you know, bribing them to get out of jail, that, that's that's tempting. I, I get it. I understand all the all the points either side. I get it. Um it's his choice, but if you're going to be raising money for bail, you can't just say give us money for bail and then even include the link on the the video <laughs> where you're saying you're not going to use the money for bail <laughs> and say on there help get Kokesh out of jail by donating to this bail fund. Come on, but they said that they're going to take the money and donate it to the Libertarian Party National because that's where they think the money should go and they're gonna they're not going to go negotiate with terrorists and stuff. That's fine. But you can't take money that was already collected for a specific, a specific goal, which is getting him out of jail, and turn around and giving it to the Libertarian Party. Now, I understand a lot of people don't like the Libertarian Party, including people who like Kokesh. Well, I, yeah, I, that's that's kind of that's that's the big that's the point. Yeah, <laughs> most of his fans are anarchists. That I'm sure they they're not willingly handing their money over to the LP. Most of them normally. So, yeah, that's that. It's a really scummy move. Oh, <laughs> and I even Jesus. pointed this out. Like, guys, like if you, if you think if you think this isn't a scam yet, you're gonna get really you're really mad if you donated to his bail fund because it's not gonna go to his bail. It's going to the LP National. But, but wait, there's more. Uh, alleged, alleged. Hold on, allegedly, because there's when we're gonna get into this later, where we're talking about some of the things he said that oh we're gonna do this with this money and then the money just vanishes. It doesn't go where it's supposed to go. People didn't get paid when they were contracted with him to do work. Lots of that stuff. So we don't even know if it was going to go to the LP at all anyway. <laughs> like it could have gone right in his pocket, you know. And uh, I definitely want to. Maybe, maybe he used it to fix the uh, storage compartment on his RV. <laughs> <Probably>. <laughs> on the Freedom Line. Um, you know. <laughs> so uh, he uh, announced an update yesterday while I was asleep. And then I woke up and I saw it. And I was infuriated because I was like, this is, this is proof this is a scam. Uh, because... 
what, what it, I was calling him the American Sargon. What would you would you say? Sargon of Kokesh. <laughs> Sargon, yeah, Sargon of Kokesh. Yeah. So Sargon of Kokesh was this guy. Who may he like, forever, may he forever reign, <laughs> reign in Kekistan. <laughs> Um, yeah, this guy, he looks oddly like, like, uh, Sargum of Akkad with an American accent. Uh, I guess he's part of Adam's team posted an update on his official thing saying, okay, guys, there was a lot of confusion. What was going on here? We're, we're, and I got a, I got a thing from, from Adam and I'm just going to read it. And the, the, the thing said, we're not, no, 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 no. You got us fucked up. We're not doing that. We're not giving the money to the libertarian party. Okay. We're giving the same amount of money that we got for the bail fund to the libertarian party, but it's not coming from that. And that was intentional. It was completely intentional. It was completely intentional. Uh, we're not, we're not, we're not backtracking here at all. This is, you just, you just, you just, you just got us fucked up. Okay. That's what it is. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to donate six grand f- that we got from bail. We're going to match those funds to the libertarian party out of our own pocket. And then the $6,000 we're going to give to bail money is still going to go to Kokesh's bail. But we're not going to go negotiate with terrorists and we're not going to give the money to the government. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. What what does that even mean? (laughs) (laughs) You're going to keep money then? You know what it reminds me of is a scene in Friday where, uh, what's his name, Smokey's paying Big Big Worm. (laughs) Oh. And he's and he's and he's got you know he's got like <laughs> he's got like a hundred dollars or something in his you know in his in his hand and he's like counting it out and then he like he's turns it over. Flips it over yeah, yeah flips it over and like tries to count it you know like oh yeah I got your money it's right here you know he's like don't it's play safe. me that's a hundred bucks and he's looking at it, he's like it's only sixty and he's all here you go <laughs> <laughs> that's that's totally fucking what it reminds me of you know like oh my god. Well, see, so many questions come out of the come out of this <laughs> because first of all, um, if they're able to match the funds the people donated, then why did anybody need they, to donate? <laughs> bingo. <laughs> yeah. Ding ding ding. Yeah. Oh man, that's like, I, I mean, I, uh. just based on the amount of you know fans he still seems to have. I guess there are a lot of stupid people because so many people are just really like completely. It's so blatant. Yeah, it really is. I mean, like you said, it, they, they put out their, their 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 correction video left you leaves you even more confused <laughs> yeah. about what's actually happening. Oh, and they're they're eating it up. The original they're eating video. It up. I don't understand how you could eat it up because it says in the video we're using the money for bail, but we're not going to pay for bail. So where the money is going? That's the that's the logical conclusion from that. And if you go in the thing, everybody's like, "Yeah, fight the power, Adam." <laughs> Are you even take paying my, attention? Take, <laughs> take my money, take my money, and don't give it to them. Yeah. That's right. That'll yeah. show them. That'll show them. Just and get hang, you out of jail just hang on to it. <laughs> they know it's there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like they know you could get out at any time. You know, it's really sucking it to them. Yeah, there. even though they haven't even said how much bail is going to be, or even eligible for bail, we don't know. They right. haven't said. You know, they denied Cantwell um, and Cantwell for all of his faults, all of his many, mm-hmm. many, 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 many faults <laughs> was was innocent <laughs> of what they were accusing of, 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 of that, of that, right. of that yeah. specific charge that they were leveling him. He was doing Correct. something similar. Uh, there's no doubt. But yeah, but many faults. That's that's not that was not one of them. And they denied him bail for the longest time, too. So we. And, and that was just for what pepper spraying someone who was attacking him. So maybe he's just trying to out Cantwell. Cantwell. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. Well, Taking a yeah. plate. He'll be a border t- border Aryan soon. Border t- Aryan. <laughs> border t- <laughs> t- Aryan. <laughs> Aryan. So, you you had it right the first time. Yeah, but it's kind of hard uh, being Jewish. <laughs> being a border Aryan. <laughs> yeah. Border t- Aryan. Yeah. Oh, Jewish. I know a few. I know a few who are. Oh, okay. Who is is it? Like, who is it? Jared? Huh? Who? No, okay. he's not. Okay. One of one of his <laughs> good one of his hilarious. good one, one of his good friends though. Yeah. Um, but it's actually not really that hard if you think about it, because I mean, look look what look what they are, are like in their homeland. <laughs> they're they're serious borderarians over oh, there. Absolutely. Because <laughs> they, they got a legit wall. And social <laughs> socialist to boot. <laughs> 
So yeah, the, <laughs> the, the money is, looks like from from what I understand right now is just going directly into their pocket. They haven't said what they're going to do with it. They said that it's going to go to bail, but at the same time they said it's not going to bail. So Kokesh is just basically having a surplus amount of cash. We don't know if they're actually going to give the LP the money. Uh, I'm going to try my best and do everything I can to try to get some information out of the LP after all this is done to see whether or not money was given to the LP under his name. Uh, we'll see. Or at least get him to provide proof that money was donated to the LP. Uh, I want to see that. But either way, if you're going to be don't taking money for 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 bail, if you're going to say like, "Hey, I, I, I'm I'm in jail. I need money to get out on bail," and people donate thousands of dollars to you, and you don't decide, "Oh, I'm not going to go out on bail," you need to refund those funds immediately. Give it back because that yeah. is that is by definition fraud. Mm-hmm. Exactly. No matter what you give the money to, even if you give it to sick kids hospital, that's fraud. Even even if you would take money for sick kids hospital, then realize like I don't like sick kids hospital. I'm going to give it to a fucking Ronald Land McD- Ronald McDonald Land charity or whatever it's called. You know that does the same thing. You still need to be like, ah, let me return your money and then we'll start again. We're going to do it for Ron- uh, Ronald McDonald's house or whatever it's called. Right? Am I wrong here? <laughs> no, no. Okay, You're absolutely. No, it's right. fraud. Yeah. On every level, but this is not even or, like that that much of a difference. There's a difference between saying, "Hey, I need to get out of jail," versus we're going to give it to the Libertarian Party so that they can promote liberty. Yeah, or, or, or at least give people the option, like, "Hey, if yeah. you donated money, we've decided not to use it for this, but we'd like to, you know, have it ear, yeah, yeah. earmarked for something else. But if you want your money back." Give it, you know, give it at us, and we'll we'll refund you. But yeah. you have the option of letting us use it for something else. At least give people the option, not just like, oh, okay, well, yeah, you handed over your your, your hard earned money uh, for this purpose, but we're we're gonna do this other thing with it. We're gonna we're gonna use it for bail, but yeah. and what I mean by bail is more weed. You yeah. know what I mean? Probably <laughs> <laughs> allegedly. But yeah. this is fraud. I, you know what I mean? But yeah, it's fraud. No matter what, you know, no matter what the other purpose is, it's. It's you're defrauding people of their money. Yeah. And this End is the story. And this is not the first time we need to make this clear. Kokesh has a very long history of making money that was donated for one cause disappear uh, for hiring people to do a service and then rent payments were never rendered or buying a service. And then once the service is being provided, skip payments and, and then slander the companies that are that are doing this. And we're going to go over a few big the bigger examples of this, too. So which one should we crack with first? <laughs> or, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get into the, we'll get into his other protests later, where he's actually doing civil disobedience and if it's real or not. But uh, so let's talk about Derek J. Freeman. You guys know who Derek J. Freeman is, right? I hope so. Absolute, Jesus Christ! Absolutely. Of course, I've 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 met the man. <laughs> okay, I have not. He's a he's a solid dude, man. From what I he's can awesome. Know. I love Derek. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. And he's queer as a blazes, but we all love him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he is, he's Not, got the uh, Bitcoin only store, I think, in uh, yeah. what, yes, he New does. Hampshire, right? Yeah. Him, yeah. And, him and Steven. Yep. And That's he, pretty he's correct. A, he's a uh, civil disobedient as well. Like, he actually does really good civil disobedient stuff. Like, I, but he did it. He's yeah, a he legit. Did it, he he's did a legit, it right. Yeah. He's, he's, it was funny. He didn't talk Derek to James. the cops. He didn't provide them information. He didn't do any of that stuff. He was just like, hey, why are you guys doing this to me? I didn't, I'm not hurting anybody. And he would not comply and, you know, drop like a fish, <laughs> have them drag him away. <laughs> you do all those things, all those stuff that Kokesh used to do, um, but actually do it, not fake it. <laughs> so Derek J. Freeman for a while was a paid intern, a quote unquote paid unquote intern for Adam Kokesh. Kokesh hired him to do some some work for him, uh, wrote out a contract saying, like, I'm going to pay you X amount for this work. Uh, Derek J. provided that work, did the work exactly what he says. Kokesh even confirms that, yes, he did the work that he was doing for me, um, and then denied ever agreeing to pay for him, even though there was written agreement between the two, and released email exchanges and, and talked about the interactions that he's had with him on, on YouTube videos, which he later took down. Uh, just because he seems like he was getting an awful lot of, he was getting a maelstrom of hate from Kokesh, like true believers, uh, saying like, oh, no, no, you're wrong. Like, how dare you criticize? He done so much for liberty, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there's a link in the description, the show notes to all the stuff that I'm alleging here. Uh, you can go and read it for yourself and be your own, uh, be your own judge. Think about it rationally. Um, you're already this far in, you probably are, <laughs> but, um, 
So he owed him th- at the time was four hundred and thirty two dollars. I believe I, I can go and look it up. Actually, uh, about four hundred thirty two dollars worth of Bitcoin, which at the time was thirty one Bitcoin. Think Jeez. about that. Yep. What, even even after after the fall off that just recently happened, you know, the knife drop. Um, uh-huh. That's a shitload of fucking money. If it's, oh yeah, yeah. Like, even if I round it down to a thousand dollars, that's thirty one thousand dollars. This would have been worth now. Um, and when he was when he first started going public with this stuff, Bitcoin had jumped up re- th- at that time, and I think it was worth like a few thousand dollars, just a couple thousand dollars or something. Which at the time, that that's a shitload of money as well. But um, and Kokesh refused, refused, refused to pay it, and then finally he was like, "Yeah, you're right. I was wrong. I did you wrong." But I'm not gonna pay four hundred dollars, <laughs> <laughs> and it's four hundred bucks. The dude is fucking rich. Like he has the money right now. Right now, he has the money to pay him off and be fine, but he's not going to. No, nope. and it's only four hundred bucks. Like that would be a it's a drop in the bucket compared to what he has on him. Right, at least what we know right now, at least twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So what's happening? <laughs> Jesus. No, yeah, I'm just reading through the emails, and it's it's uh, and yeah, I just feel dirty. Yeah, need to be cleansed. <laughs> And the evidence is there. Like he's he's fully admits that you know he he took the money and uh, and ran, even though yeah. he, even though Derek J did agree. But he's saying like, yeah, I'm just not going to pay. You. Like I just and he he did like this this and it's it's gone too. And I wish Derek, please please tell me you just privated these videos or something that I could pull them up somehow. Um, where he was like they were having a phone conversation with him and he's like, yeah, so you're going to pay me? And he's like, no, no, I just wanted I just wanted to kind of mend the fences and you know just. Just get, you know, put all this stuff behind us and everything, and you know, I want to be on good terms with you again. And he was like, "Okay, so you're gonna pay me?" And he was like, "No, I'm just, I just want to mend the fences." <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that's how you mend the fences, you fucker. <laughs> cost, it costs money to mend fences. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's materials, time. Yeah. Come on, man, this is this is fucking basic economics. <laughs> what are you a commie? You know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he was setting up that commune to go live in an earth ship, wasn't he? Wasn't yep. he? Yep. And to this day, a coke cash is not. Be- he, he, even if you say like, okay, thirty-one Bitcoin, that's that's ridiculous now. Ridiculous to for him. To and even that. and even Derek said that Derek Derek said all yeah. along that he would just take the 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 FRN value of what he was owed at the time. He yeah. was fine with that. Even mm-hmm. once the even once the price went up, he's like, I, you know, he's like, I don't care. He's like, I, you know, if he just gives me what he's what he actually owed me, then I'll pay, I'll I'll let it go. Yeah. And Grace, he did totally gracious and reasonable, you know. Yeah, because there's plenty of people who wouldn't. Plenty of people have been like, "No, motherfucker, you owe me 31 Bitcoin." You know, like yeah, that happened to Ben Stone. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> famously or infamously. Yeah, right. So the next one is Shield Mutual. Uh, <laughs> this one, this one's a little tough because it's a really, really long, drawn out, very meticulous and methodical like case <laughs> against Kokesh, and it's very long, and there's no summary. Um, but I'm going to give you the summary for it, and you can read the entire thing for yourself and see all the evidence right there in there's front no of your There's no summary, face. but I'm going to give you one. Yeah, there's no well, there's no summary on the page, but I'm going to link yeah, it. I'm, yeah. just... <laughs> I'm going to summarize it for you. But wait, so, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go on, go on. <laughs> okay, so Shield Mutual was a, it's a it was like a legal defense fund for activists, if I recall correctly. It's a legal defense fund for act- activists in the libertarian community. And what you do is you pay this monthly fee, and if something happens to you within the legal system, they would come out and def- help defend you and try to get you out of jail and, and remedy the situation as fastly as possible while still being very kind of in the libertarian activist community and, and you know abiding by all the things that you should do to be a good activist. They were a really good company for a while. It's, it's, it's since closed. Probably mostly because of their their backlash with Ke- uh, Kokesh Cantwell. Kokesh, what's the difference, really? Uh, <laughs> I was about to say Co- Cantwell. Um, Can't cash. Yeah. Co- so Kokesh. Co- Cokewell. <laughs> Co- <laughs> Cokewell. That's what you know. <sighs> Anyways, <laughs> I'm coked well. Um, so <laughs> well coked. <laughs> Fitting. So sorry. Go on, man. <laughs> so Kokesh <laughs> so Co- was paying for this this service, and he got arrested. And after he got arrested, George Donnelly. Shocker. Yeah. Who the who the fuck it? <laughs> Get right out of town. <laughs> Kokesh arrested. Unpossible. <laughs> Inconceivable. 
<laughs> Inconc- I don't think you're saying that word. I don't think you. <laughs> you keep using that word. I don't think you means what you think it means. It means what you think it means. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> after being derailed three thousand times, we continue. <laughs> so, um, they came out and they went to his defense and they were kicking ass for him. They were really kicking ass for him and and helping him out the best they could. And in the process, he stopped paying. He stopped paying the monthly fee that you need to pay in order to keep the service going. And they kept writing email after email saying, hey, we're, you know, we, we love doing business with you and, and we're, we're glad to help you. And we've been working really hard to, to help your case and everything, but you're, you're not paying. And there's been email after email where saying just making excuses about why they're not paying. And then they said, OK, well, if you're not going to pay us per the agreement for the contract that you signed, uh, we're going to be pulling back services and you're on your own. You know, sorry that it had to end this way, but whatever. And then Kokesh, uh, after he got out and everything, went on this big smear campaign against George Donnelly and saying, like, this guy is a, a fraud and a, a con man. He didn't he didn't give us the services that we provided. And so Donnelly wrote this really long statement on his on, on Shield Defense website saying, this is exactly what happened. This is our side of the story. Here is the evidence to back up our side of the story uh, that Kokesh did not pay for the services that, that were being rendered to him. So we stopped rendering the said services. Services. That's it. And here's the evidence. And Kokesh is now going on a smear campaign, uh, slandering us and accusing us of things we never did. Um, and here's some of the other evidence that shows that this guy is not someone that you want to do business with in the future. And we're not going to ever do business with them again, even if he does pay us. We're not we're going to just refund the money and say we're not interested in doing business with you. Um, so that's one that's in the <laughs> description. Did you guys know about this at all? When it happened? No, I had I, okay. I hadn't heard of it till today. Okay. Yeah, no, I was uh, this one I was unaware of. Well, that's news you can use. And this is from 2013, by the way. This is the more you know. This is this this all this stuff goes way 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 back. So there's like two real clear examples that this this guy doesn't. Now M K Lords had written an article called Libertarian Welfare Queens. Um, and she 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 started some some things that that happened that you know there's I, I can't really find any information that proves it but I know it's true because a lot of people have said it's true a lot of people have donated to these things and, and got burned and got ripped off come back and say like yeah that's what happened to me um, and I've talked to these people so it's this is for the most part a hearsay <laughs> so there's no like documentation for it that I know of if you have it please provide it and I would love to throw it in the show notes um, but in that he was planning on doing a uh, a tour across the country and his his first freedom line um, <laughs> before pre freedom line freedom line and he raised like 50 grand I'm gonna pull this up to just get the numbers right um, let me get the numbers right. 50 grand, was it? 50 grand. Uh, I'm reading 50 grand. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, so 50 grand down the memory hole. And then they raised another three, uh, 30 grand after they said, hey, we lost the money. We don't know what happened. We need we need to raise money to go on this tour. Please have, Hashtag please donate. And then they went on their tour. So there's 50 grand just poof. Gone. <laughs> just gone. <laughs> All this money that was raised to go to the, this trip just gone. Uh, what does it What does it say exactly? I don't, I don't recall. I read it yesterday, but it was like me um, also me scrambling trying to get to work at the same time. <laughs> maybe, anybody? Maybe wait, 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 anybody? The anybody? Anyone? Wait. What? What did anyone? he say? What did what say? Anyone? Bueller. 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 Anyone called? Do anyone knows what George Bush called this in 1981? Anyone? Something D O O economics, voodoo, economics. <laughs> voodoo. voodoo. It's voodoo, man. All right, so go ahead. Do the voodoo that you do. So, well, what did exactly did this say? What did what say? I'm so confused. Okay, so here we go. So I'm gonna post a link, and you can read the thing for yourself, and uh, I'll read the the part in question. So then again, uh, so this is continued on. Then there's this is rich. He blamed his buddies. For, all right, for the missing funds. That's 50 grand down the memory hole. Mind you, donors whined that he got his poor girlfriend to give him some half-assed explanation. Everyone promptly forgot that, and no lawsuit was filed. Then, if that isn't, it wasn't enough for libertarians to at least question his judgment, he goes on a book tour to spread the good word of liberty. Oh, I guess this was the freedom line, I guess. Then I can understand needing to hustle uh, when you get out of jail. But the dude just got another 30 grand from people for this tour. Jesus. Yeah. <clears throat> Even after his him or his team disappeared, fifty grand. Read that last sentence again; it really sinks in. And I'll read it again. 
I can understand people needing to hustle when you get out of jail, but the dude got another 30 grand uh, from the people of this tour, and that's after his team lost 50 grand. Jesus. Yeah. This guy is, and, 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 and to top it all off, to top all of this off, the dude is fucking rich. Like, the guy comes from fucking money. And scammy money too <laughs> like the apple did not fall far from the tree we should talk about <laughs> kokesh's dad <laughs> kokesh's dad charles coke Co- kokesh i almost said charles koch uh charles kokesh uh let's see it's tomato tomato yeah yeah <laughs> if, if one hour two months what's the difference uh <laughs> so kokesh um his dad charles Co- kokesh uh, was get, got in a lot of trouble with the SEC because he had a scheme, uh, uh, kind of a land investment scheme, where he was basically taking money from investors and uh, kind of paying off big investors with small investors. It's almost like like it's almost like a pyramid scheme, but kind of on. It really de- de- depends on how much you're 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 donating versus like when you got in and when you got out. It's a different kind of. It's not really a pyramid scheme, but it is fraud. So what he was doing was he was taking all this money from from uh, from investors and then paying off the big investors with the small time investors. So people who were investing like in the, in the realm of you know, a few thousand dollars, five thousand uh, dollars money was being taken out of taken out of the accounts from from those and then given into the, the the people who were investing millions of dollars into this funds. And the SEC, the Security and Exchange Commission's uh, cracked down and said, no, this is fraud uh, and you're going to pay them back. Uh, with all kinds of crazy restrictions and loopholes. The Cato Institute stepped in and a few other libertarian organizations said like, yeah, this guy did commit fraud, but you're you're kind of overreaching a bit on in terms of the penalty, which I agree with their analysis. I think that yeah, they were kind of overreaching. But at the same time, yes, this guy needs to pay back with interest what he defrauded uh, all these people from. This guy is... Mm-hmm. A millionaire, million millionaire, and he's a he's a big big guy in in uh, the Santa Fe, uh, New Mexico kind of area development, you know, big money. He's 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 re- really well into money. So Kokesh's dad constantly bails out Kokesh and pays for stuff for him all the time, while at the same time people are donating thousands of dollars to Kokesh for doing activism, which he doesn't need. His dad can pay it off. He has money in the bank as well. He can pay it off himself, but. Kokesh still still is saying, "Hey, where's my little tin cup? Please, I need money, money, all the time. Coins, yeah, alms, <laughs> alms, alms for the poor. And he's oh. not not poor. This dude is rich. He gets money from his dad, who is also a scammer, a convicted scammer. I can say that <laughs> he's a convicted uh, he's a convicted fraudster. And why would you expect the apple to far that fall for, far from the tree as well?" You guys didn't know about this, right? Is this news to you? This is news to me too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I had only heard. I, Down I, I, heard, I think I heard briefly about this a while ago, but I kind of, kind of forgot about it. <laughs> uh, well, I knew, I knew he had me. money. I knew he had money. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. Uh, like I knew that right. much, and I knew that he, you know, I knew that Adam, I, Adam, of course, was was uh, well taken care of because of that. Which is why uh, he, I remember when uh, when MK first wrote that piece, uh, I th- the, the the libertarian welfare uh, welfare queens piece. I think I was still a fan of Molyneux at that point. I think I took it offensively, but the the only one I didn't at the time was was the one was against Adam because I'm like, oh yeah, he's, he's a total douche. Oh no, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure everybody everybody I think everybody here hated Cantwell from the beginning. Did anybody here actually like Cantwell? I did. Oh, you did? I, oh, okay. Yeah, back when I knew him here, like he oh, was okay. fine. Like I didn't have a problem with him. And then it was, you know, he just got crazier and crazier. Yeah, <laughs> I, see, like, I, didn't, right. I didn't know him until he did the the thing about the cops. Like, so she go telling everybody to go and kill cops. That's what I was like. Who the fuck is this guy? This guy sounds like a cop. <laughs> <laughs> cop fact, the first no, time I, I heard I, his I, name, I, there was a Facebook page being created and it invited me to like it. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Can't, Chris Cantwell's a cop? <laughs> Who the fuck is Chris Cantwell? And I go to his website and he's got this thing about killing cops. And I was like, Oh yeah, this dude's a cop. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was my first kind of intro to Chris Cantwell, so I've never been a fan. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I kind of came, found him at the end of his or the beginning of his downward spiral. So yeah. I never really got into him. Okay, but but you you kind of no, knew I mean, him personally, it, so I guess you can. Kind of, <laughs> that's a different kind of take. Yeah. I, knew, I knew some other people too. 
um, hi Drea, who um, <laughs> who actually knew him and liked him at the very beginning, and then realized like, oh, this guy's a fuck bag, fuck him. So yeah, yeah. Um, what else? Oh, so so his protests. So oh, yeah, a lot of his Adam. protests are fake, and there's one that I can definitively prove without question is a complete fraud, and that was when he smoked weed in front of the White House and got arrested. Do you guys remember when this happened or no? <laughs> yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't. I don't. I don't remember this happen, happening because I was. This is at the time where I was like, yeah, I'm over this guy. <laughs> I'm not, not going to follow him anymore. Yeah. Okay. I, so still, you, I, I wasn't following him as much, but I still remember it. <laughs> okay. So he 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 did this activism, and we're also going to talk about. Remind me to talk about Steve Miller Miller. What he said about Kokesh too, because we need to talk about that. Because oh, by the way, Kokesh is getting a microphone. We were going to raise a do a fundraiser to get uh, Steve Miller Miller a new microphone. But he's getting one. Thank you, Mav. Um, a lot of a lot of fucking shout outs this episode. Jesus. So uh, <laughs> it's a col- it's a collaborative effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lulberts is a collaborative effort. Um, but it's all me. <clears throat> Hashtag please donate. No, I'm just kidding. Don't. <laughs> I'd rather you shop through my of, Amazon link than than give me money. You buy yourself a lot something. Of un- get and let me. A lot of unpaid money. interns though. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of unpaid interns. I. I <laughs> Like I just got my thing for the first two months. It's like thirty bucks from Amazon. That's that's, and I've gotten no donations. Oh, Patreon too. Yeah, Patreon. I do stuff. I, I got twelve seventy five, baby. Woohoo! Woohoo! I'll give you guys. A, our fr- I'll give you guys our first a, payment ever. I'll give you guys a nickel worth of Zan. Give me your. Give me. <laughs> <laughs> I can get that through. I can get that from the faucet, man. Yeah. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> That's what oh, I was going to do. I was just going to put your name into the faucet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, anyways, I'm not giving you money. This is I told you this is unpaid work. <laughs> but I'm I, yeah, fully but I, aware of that. Yeah, I, I link your guys' uh, pay stuff. So if you guys want to donate, I'd rather you guys give to them and go through my Amazon link. That's what I really want. Or go through Patreon to me. Uh, at least you'll get something out of the Patreon work. extra. Uh, anyways, so back on back on track. So Kokesh uh, did a uh, a thing where he was going to uh, smoke weed in front of the White House. It would be a big demonstration on four. I think it was on 420, wasn't it? Probably on 420. It would be stupid not to. It would make sense. I think so. Yeah, I'd have to look at the date, but um, sounds right. So he was doing a big cannabis event where they were going to go in front of the White House, and at 420, they were going to smoke a joint, and Kokesh at 423, 2, 1, lit up a joint, (sighs) smoking it, and there was a cop standing right next to him and was like, yep, not doing anything about this. This is fine. <laughs> and everybody was like, oh, yeah, Adam stood up to the man, and the man t- back down. Woo! And Whoa. then after the protest, they were all kind of standing around, hanging out. And, you know, there was cops kind of walking around, but they were kind of, like, uninterested at the time. They were just kind of walking around. And then uh, Kokesh meets up with this Afro dude, and, they, you know, he lights up a joint, and he's like, and he hands it to Adam, and Adam starts hitting it. And the guy goes, yeah, this one's real. <laughs> <laughs> And then immediately after he said, this is this one's real, uh, the cop takes the takes the uh, they throw the joint on the ground. The cop comes and arrested him. And that's it. Uh, and he starts making a big stink, you know, trying to back out like, oh, he's trying to he's trying to kidnap me and collapses. And he does what you're supposed to do when you're doing civil disobedience. <laughs> he finally does what he's supposed to do, <laughs> what he should have done when he, during this cop arrest, I guess. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, it turns out the whole thing was fake. He was not smoking weed. People who were there. And you can actually see the people who are there even say while he's being arrested, he wasn't even smoking pot. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> maybe maybe that's how he learned to turn the camera off in, yeah, his, yeah. Uh, in, the, in his latest arrest. He's yeah. like, oh, shit. And I posted, I posted a video <laughs> in the description as well. You can go and watch it. Don't. don't don't watch like the second half of the video because the second half of the video is just this this constitution liquor like going on about how Kokesh needs to respect the constitution that he swore to uphold and yeah, yeah. you know he, he he's got he's he's carrying his own leash I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, I was I was just he's got a dog like, on his shirt, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does he? Yeah. yeah. It's like a I dog just... with uh, fatigues on helm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was All right, just anyway. re- I was just reading the uh, the notes for that, <laughs> and the guy had to edit it and say he was turning off the comments, so he couldn't read them anymore because 
<laughs> or, or apparently he got descended upon by the Kokesh fanboys. Yep. And they just constantly attacked him for, for, for basically proving exactly what you said. Yeah. <laughs> they're just mad about it. The people they're, they're at the of... event were saying, that was not weed. That was not real. This one is real. <laughs> that one was not real. He wasn't smoking pot. Like, those were quotes from the fucking thing. Like, come on. How could you deny yeah. this? How could you deny the self-evident? A is A. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he's just counting on the blind stupidity and <laughs> loyalty of his fan base. And he knows. And they dumb. seem to come. Yeah, exactly. They he seem to come dumb. through. They, they come through quite often. Yep. He plays them for a fool and he's always right. Sorry, guys. Yeah. If, I know I know. there's a lot of people who are probably still like kind of waking up out of this thing. And I, I don't mean to be like personally insulting to you, but we got to face it. Like a lot of Kokesh fans, they're not with it or they're just or they're or they're just kind of not paying attention because they just assume that he's on the level you know and they're not trying to pick apart this thing or think about it too deeply because they're just like oh but it's kokesh and he can't do anything bad like he's a good guy right i mean there's there's it's that kind of tribal thought and people do that i'm guilty of doing it too where people just kind of just give the benefit of the doubt because they're in their tribe um and you need yeah. to, you always yeah. need to question he's a, he's a celebritarian he's yeah. got to be one of the good ones but there are some people that are genuinely dumb that I've interacted with. Uh, genuinely dumb. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> so we should kind of like end this piece on on talking about uh, Macy because it, it would be wrong for me to talk about all the bad things that Kokesh has done and not talk about like the extremely toxic kind of s things that he does to people that he knows, uh, including his own girlfriend. Um, so I don't know if you guys have ever talked to people who've worked with Cantwell, just and not even the whole defrauding thing. Cantwell, just, sorry, Kokesh. I see them as the same. They're both fraudsters. <laughs> Coke, Cokewell, Cokewell. So hard to keep them yeah. straight. <laughs> yeah, Kokesh. <laughs> I know a lot of people who have worked with Kokesh who have said like, yeah, this guy like treats us like crap. He's always gaslighting us and all this other stuff, including former girlfriends like Macy Tomlin who I'm going to also post a link in this as well. And she describes like her entire relationship with him and how he made her made her how she like gaslit her into like signing a slave contract yeah. <laughs> to work with them and just really being like a, a real big fucking piece of shit to everybody he knows, including, you know, his own fiance, you know, have you guys yeah. heard about any of this stuff as well? Oh yeah, uh, okay. yeah. I've, I've watched the videos and oh, man. yeah, I knew I knew this one and <laughs> oh, this was just me this was just messed up. <laughs> yeah, this is a heartbreaker. Because I've, you know what I've I mean? met Macy too. Yeah. I've hung out with her. Yeah, in Michigan a couple of years ago, and it was just like, I mean, part of me was like, well, you did sign it, but like everything else I knew about Adam was just like, yeah, he's got to be wrong here somehow. Yeah. <laughs> And you know, like I've been, I've been in abusive relationships. It's not like that same dynamic, and it wasn't physical abuse. I wasn't getting beat up by a girl. If that's what you're asking, no. Like, I, but I've been in, in relationships that are like emotionally damaging, and it's really kind you of you were a little, hard. you were a little too quick to offer that, yeah. uh, that explanation, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know if I buy that. She, she, she didn't hit me, but she was very emotionally <laughs> abusive. I've, I've experienced that. I know what it was like, and I, and in the middle of it, I kind of snapped out of it myself. I didn't need anybody to tell me, even though they were trying to. Um, but it was kind of like that kind of waking up moment where i was like oh no this is this is the cycle of abuse i know what this is like i'm going through this like fuck this girl mm -hmm. um it's happened to me it's probably one of the reasons why i'm, I'm not too keen to, to hop on the next relationship <laughs> with, with another woman but you know you know you've been burned too many times but anyways yeah yeah, the, the, I, there, it's a it's a very different thing. Like it's it's always great when you're outside of it and you're looking at it 2020. To say like, oh, you shouldn't have done this and you shouldn't have done that. But it's kind of hard when you're being like manipulated like that, in order to kind of really step back and think about things rationally, especially if you're in love with someone. It's, and you can tell by people who love Kokesh that they're not interested in rational explanations about why their why their no. why their Jesus figure is is wrong. <laughs> they're just not interested rationally. And of course, they can always look back and say, like, yeah, I shouldn't have signed that contract and you know, with Kokesh, and I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have done this, and I shouldn't have done that with them, and I probably would have been okay. But you did, and you weren't thinking about it because you were too wrapped up in emotion, right? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's still no reason to justify 
treating people like shit, even if it doesn't break the non-aggression principle. Like you don't treat people like shit. Come on, man. <laughs> right. Even if she signed a contract, yeah. you know what I mean? I mean, I think like the hidden or, or, or this is kind of underlying tendency to manipulate people. And I wonder how much of that is kind of innate to his personality and how much of it was like picked up or learned from his time in the military as a, um, uh, he was a member of like a civil affairs detachment of the Marines. I believe he did like a lot of psyops, you know what I mean? So I wonder, it seems like he's kind of mastered the, the art of mm-hmm. finding vulnerable people or people who are, are maybe naive or, or whatever, and just kind of finding a way to manipulate them to get what he wants from them. And mm-hmm. I think he did this to a fucking T with, with Macy and, and, you know, yeah, at the end of the day, she, voluntarily did all this shit but um yeah uh, just it's just so deplorable you know what i mean yeah by the way on a side note she probably could have thrown thrown blows with me like she she was into water polo those girls are rough <laughs> but we'll never know because it didn't happen <laughs> oh, thanks satan it never yeah. happened right oh. hail satan shem had yeah. Hell, Satan. For, full, yeah. full, full circle. Yeah, full circle. <laughs> well, we ended up talking about Satanism. Damn it! <laughs> I wasn't going to let you get away. Can't be avoided. <laughs> anyway, as, so as we're far wrapping as wrapping up, so go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, as far as like where he learned it, I don't know. I mean, if it, if he had just been in that position in the Marines, I would assume he'd picked it up there. But like we were talking oh. about earlier, you know, his dad has a tendency to do stuff right. like this too. So it's it's probably a combination of the things. But, you know, that's one of the things that eventually turned turned uh, me off to him was the fact that, you know, on top of everything else, like re- really paying attention to how he how he talks to people and what he mm-hmm. says. And it's, you know, he, he, he likes to tout himself as somebody who uses nonviolent communication, which is something I have a lot of issues with. Ugh. And I've I've spoken about this at length many times. <laughs> Am I? Because I know it's a, I know it's a tool that can be used, but people it can be abu- it can be abused to to all like uh, Jeremy, very easily. And Jeremy, so many I'm, people I'm don't feeling, even start. I'm feeling very confused. Good, and, feel and confused. Hurt so <laughs> by the way you're describing the way I talk, and I just wanted yes. you to know that. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> it's so condescending. Exactly. I know. <laughs> and manipulative. And it's, no, I mean I because like I mean, but I'm, totally I'm, nonviolent. I'm, but I'm like I'm I'm friends with Daryl Becker, who's a big proponent of it and stuff. And I like Daryl, mm-hmm. and like he like I can see how it can be used in certain situations, um, and I've seen how it can be used to defuse certain situations. But it, it's just something that it's way too easy for somebody like say a sociopathic cult leader type yeah. um, to pick up on it and make use of it. And I think he even dips into like neuro linguistic programming and crap like that too. Yeah. Just like with the way he speaks, kind of like Molyneux shit. Um, and uh, you know, it's it, it, so yeah, it, when you do that type of thing, you're usually just casting a big net and seeing what kind of idiots you can drag in. Cause that those are the people you drag in. And yeah. uh, they're those are the ones who will keep supporting you no matter how much evidence is point, put in front of them. Yeah. And, and you know what, mm-hmm. like cult leaders, Vir- virtually every cult leader that uh, that I've come across has you can you can somehow find ties where they were involved with another cult. Like, for example, Molyneux used to be involved with uh, uh, what was it? it? Used to be called Est. Now it's um, Land uh, the the Forum or was it, what was it called? I have no Landmark idea. Forum. Yeah. Landmark Forum, and then you have um, uh, like. Uh, Jesus, I'm so bad right now. L. Ron Hubbard was really involved in OTO. Alistair Crowley, Crowley and those those types, uh, really deep into it. Jack Parsons hmm. and stuff, and um, yeah. So, but Kokesh, yeah, he was in a cult. Kokesh it was, it was, was in the United, military. Yeah, it was called it was called the United <laughs> States Marine Corps, and the Marine Corps. <laughs> du- no, I'm 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 serious. They they you know you're right. They intentionally and they know that it is, and that's what it's for. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's the only way you can you can have a service member is to basically brainwash. They use not brainwash is not an accurate term. Use thought reform techniques in order to to get them stripped of their individuality and and build another self, like another. 
uh, a person, like another identity. Is that's, that's basically what brainwashing is, is you're basically creating them a cult personality and suppressing mm-hmm. their their original personality. But yeah, that's what that's what the United States Marine Corps was about, was basically going through this r- rigorous process where you're stripped of your individuality and your individual thought and your individual freedom and, and made to think in line. But that's the only way you can have a military is to do something like that. So well, on one hand, you know. it's, it's understandable. The other hand, they go and bomb brown people overseas, which I'm not a big fan of, to say the least. No. <laughs> to say the very fucking least. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and no, like you said, more than anything, I think more than any other service branch of service that I'm aware, or at least passingly familiar with, the Marines have cultivated that to almost perfection. You know, it's always like Marine for life. You know what I mean? Like even when you're out, you're still a Marine. You know what I mean? Even people who are in the Army, like I, my brothers were in the Army, and they don't talk about it the same way I, I, I know people who have been in the Marines do. They they are like once a Marine, always a Marine. And yep. It's it's totally like yeah. You're yeah. right about that. He took an oath to defend the Constitution. How dare he? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so closing thoughts. Anyone want to wrap this up with a nice, pretty satanic bow? <laughs> with the naked girl under it? Um. <laughs> On an altar? <laughs> uh, <laughs> man. So many visuals. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I... Uh, just, under God. a baphomet. Blech. <laughs> Yeah, follow you know, follow your lead yourself more than anything. Yeah. You know, it sounds cliche, but stop following people and, uh, you know, yeah, Kokesh, yeah. Kokesh is bad. I, I have a, I have a better way of saying it, and that's wrap wrap your ideas with the ideas and not with the personalities from whom you've heard it right. from. The, from like people people are really tribalistic, and it's 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 in human nature, and it, it kind of needs to go. Where you need to just say like, well, these people are in my camp, they agree with me. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt at all costs, and not not try to investigate things or try to or try to like whitewash any time I hear criticism about it because they're they're doing it for the cause. And when when they actually come down to some sort of terms like yeah, this is not right, they kind of wash it. Well, it's for the greater cause. It's for a good cause. It's a cause higher than myself. It's a spook, right? Nice spook. Yeah. <laughs> nice spooks, nerd. Um, I have the best spooks, by the way. I love my spooks, but I recognize we all spooks. do. Yeah, <laughs> I recognize that they're spooks. Um, but yeah, like don't. But I don't say like, like if if you were to criticize David Friedman, which I would describe myself as a, like a Friedmanite uh, when in terms of you know my my political views. But if you were to like show me that that David Friedman like he, and for as far as I know he doesn't like gropes women or uh, you know at, at conferences or grabs them by the pussy or fucking like you know beats his children or or has raped people or uh, or has like or really has like a like a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of bunch of dead young boys that he's raped under his cross space um, I'm very willing to go like well, oh okay tell me more I really want to know if this guy's a piece <laughs> of shit but I still I still agree with him politically <laughs> like and, and if you want me to disagree with him politically show me how he's wrong politically like i'm i'm very right. much open to the ideas i'm not i don't wrap my ideas around him i don't wrap my ideas around levey or or sterner like you can show me that these guys were terrible people that'd be fine but that's not what that's not what who makes me like they don't make me so if they do something wrong let me know i'm i'm more than interested to give it a listen really am but that doesn't change <laughs> change anything about me, right? Right. Yeah. Fuck people. It's all about ideas. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and don't st- and don't blindly follow me either. And I, I know that the people that listen to this podcast don't. And I thank you for that. I'm thank you. For that. And a lot of them have challenged me on things. Keep doing that. <laughs> like challenge me if I if I'm Absolutely. wrong. I want to know. Yeah. It's like it's like Stephen King said: murder your darlings. You know, don't yeah. grow kill too your fond. idols. Don't. Yeah, kill your idols. Don't fall, don't grow too fond of any one person. Yep. It's actually very easy for me because I've always hated people. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're misanthropes. It's easy Wah. for us. <laughs> it comes, comes naturally. Hashtag misanthropic mongoose. R.I.P. <laughs> Rest in peace. Uh, rip in peace. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Good talking with you guys again. You yeah, too, man. man. Yeah, hail Satan. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.